All right, here we are, we've been looking at, um, oh no, this is not what I'm supposed to put here, where is it? Okay, this is it, sorry. <laughs> All right, so we have um, been looking at attacks and dreams and tackling them, you understand? And um, yesterday we are trying to um, look at the source of a dream and uh, how do we keep our source as God only, only God at all times. You know, this is very important. Now, we have covered a lot of things this week, and I want to, um, just like I've done each day, I've reiterated on the past things and then added to it some new things. Now, if you have a question, please type it there in the comment about um, uh, uh, this teaching on attacks and dreams and then tackling them. If you have any question type, uh, I will try and treat it. Now, listen, we have seen, I testified perfection of healing for my children. Yeah, yeah, but, but have you asked them? Because that's what the testimony is all about. Have you asked them? Now, listen, so um, we have seen that the first thing to do is to first of all set your own mindset that there is no revelation from any dream that is higher than the revelation of the word of God. No revelation. That's the first thing. We have established that. And you must maintain that because the moment you lose this, you have lost something very precious and great. Because that's when Satan cannot manipulate. A woman, every time the husband gets a job, the man is into construction. Every time the husband gets a job, she will dream. She will have a dream. And the dream always in the same pattern. All right, not the exact same dream, but always similar. Either some arm robbers came to their house to steal, or some people came and packed some things away from their house. It's always something being stolen from them. And then... I'm saying another testimony here. I hope you've asked your sister. All right. Augustine says, I testify that my sister in the village has received healing in her cramped legs. Father, we give you praise for that. We give you praise. 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 Thank you, Father, for that. We bless your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Yeah, once you, once you confirm uh, yeah, that you have the manifestation, just write a testify and put it in there. We give thanks to God. When we give thanks to God, <laughs> God maintains that healing. There is no devil that can take that healing. All right? Yeah, another person, Christiana, is saying, I testify that I have a sound mind. Maybe you had a troubled mind before. You have a sound mind now. We give thanks unto God. Father, we thank you for the sound mind. Thank you for removing troubled mind and confusion from this, your child. We bless your name in Jesus' mighty name. So, this um, woman will have this dream. And that will be the end of the husband's um, work. The job will, something will happen and the man will lose, will lose the contract. And that kept repeating until there was no more jobs coming for the man. No more jobs coming. The doors were shut. You understand? Now, so we met and then we discussed and I said, okay, you know what? This thing, we have to really deal with it. You know, <laughs> it's, it's serious. So we, we prayed, we dealt with it. We asked that God to open new doors for the man and all of that. And the Lord did. The Lord is gracious and good. He did open up a new door. In fact, the door that now opened came through me. I know someone that was trying to get something done. I connected him to the person and then they started a project. And lo and behold, the woman had the same dream. And I said, okay, now, that dream, don't do any video or any prayer <laughs> like you used to do because the prayers and the videos they were doing were out of fear. Yeah, one day I will teach how to... <laughs> yeah, I, I wish we had done this in this series. You know, how not to pray out of fear, how to pray out of faith. Well, really, let me just put it to you this way, you know, so even if we don't cover it deeply. Once you pray from the point of the finished work of Christ, the point of victory, 
you have already overcome praying out of here. I can tell you this. I can tell you this, saints, that 60 to 70% of believers who stay attacking their dreams pray out of fear. And when you pray out of fear, <laughs> it's not a prayer that is always effectual. No, it's not effectual. It's never effectual. You know, so I said, don't do any video. So I said, both ourselves and the and they came and we said, I, I prayed and I declare over that matter. And I said, look, this job shall be finished. You, Satan, that is trying to use this to terminate jobs, you have failed. And I declared the finished work of Christ and all that. And I told them, don't, don't do anything, just leave it. Lo and behold, confusion came up within the man and the woman. And I told the man, I said, just finish the job. And she did it. she's doing this. She's, I said, don't worry about whatever she's doing. Just finish the job. I don't want to continue anymore. I said, I don't care what you feel. Please just go ahead and finish the job. <laughs> so he finished the job. The woman refused to pay him. I told him, I said, don't worry. Did you finish the job? Yes, I did. Okay, good. That's it. We have broken one level. Let's wait for the next. So the next job he got was with a religious organization. They were doing some structure, you know, so it was really building for a church, but not our own church, you know. So, and then he got into it. The same dream came again. Same dream. You know? <laughs> and then they came and told me, I said, okay, no problem. We thank God for this. And I told them, please don't do any, you know, these videos that, you just do and then you pray out of fear and just create more confusion and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Another testimony is coming. I testify I'm no, no longer hearing my heartbeat in my ears. So she was hearing a heartbeat in her ears. Father, we thank you. We don't really know what you healed her of, but we know it's something that is mighty. You are fixed whatever it is. We give you glory and praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. All right. So, so, <laughs> so we prayed. <laughs> I, I prayed with them. I prayed from the point of victory, the finished work of Christ. And I told them, don't bother. Just go and do the job. Glory to God. And well, they didn't take the contract for him. There was no trouble. There was no wala, no problem at all. He finished the job successfully, but... You know, he now realized that um, the agreement he made with the church, it was really not making anything. I mean, what he made out of it, even though that was some, some money that time, but that money wasn't even good enough to pay, you know, even their rent or something, you know. It just uh, very small money. I don't want to mention the amount, you know, but it was very, very, very small money. Money that, I mean, you, you take maybe about six friends out and you hit, and that's the end of it. <laughs> That was what he made <laughs> from doing a whole construction, you know. So I told him, I said, well, see it as a seed to God. You understand? Now, I'm not sure whether it was the one before this or this church one that, because they also told me that one of the experiences they also have is after having the dream sometime, when that thing is really serious, someone is going to come from their village some suspicious people that they know are diabolical will come and visit. And they will bring either some food or something, and that's it, they will lose the job, you know. So one of these two that I just mentioned, actually, I can't remember which one precisely. Someone came from the village. They came to tell me, oh, they have come, they have come. You know, I remember the day, the day I told her, I said, look, as you're going home now, please go and sleep. We're going to do something now. Whatever they are brought, they are going to carry it back. So we did the prayers, and I told them, don't go and do any video, just go home and sleep. Just keep declaring the victory of Christ. I, it, see, I, I wasn't discouraging videos, so please don't misunderstand this. Videos are good. You know, praying overnight is good. But the reason why I didn't want them to pray is because they were used to praying out of fear. So I know if they go and do that video, they will still follow that old pattern. They were not yet cleansed. 
You understand what I mean by cleanse? I mean the word had not yet totally transformed them. So I know they are still having their old. That's why I didn't want them to do any video. So it's not that I'm against video or that that wasn't that was bad. No, it's not bad. It's okay. It's good. So they went. The next morning, the person woke up and said, ah, said, do you remember something, something, something that you forgot that she has to leave now, 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 now. <laughs> and the person left. I said, all the food the person bought, go and give it to the needy. <laughs> And that was it. Now, after the church project, which he made little from, the next project the man had, by this time, they were now like, ah, so this dream, ah, we'll overcome it. You know, because they've seen like two consecutive, you know, victories, you know, even though each of the victories were not full, full and total. But the next project the man got, he built a house. He built a house. Oh. Why, why, why am I telling this story? Because this is a story I followed one step at a time over a period of time. I mean, this is, this is not something that happened in two weeks or three weeks. I mean, months, you know, we're really working on this thing. And that's why it's important. You have to know how to deal with these things. You have to master it. All right? And the first thing is to make sure that you have they understand that the revelation of the word is higher than any revelation from any dream or vision or any prophecy. The word is a final authority. Okay? You must get that right. You must get that right. Then, I've told us, Satan can be the source of dreams. God can be the source of dreams. The way to make sure that God is the only source of your own dream is Keep purity. Keep purity. Keep living a holy life. I said it yesterday. Keep living a holy life. And when you make mistakes, quickly run to the blood and receive forgiveness immediately. Immediately. Receive forgiveness. You are cleansed. And don't let anybody offend you so much that you refuse to forgive. Forgive them. Keep zero sin status always. You understand? It keeps the enemy away. See, our holiness really, really, really doesn't do much on God's side. Meaning, on God's side, God, is, God already accepts you as his child. He's already approved of you. You can always approach him and walk into his presence. When you live a holy life, he loves it. He enjoys it. Why? Because he loves us to manifest like him. So he's, he brings him pleasure. But that is not the reason why God answers our prayer. God answers our prayer because he has given his promise and he's going to keep his promise. That's the reason why he answers our prayers. Do you understand? But when you are dealing with these forces of darkness, they are the accuser of the brethren. You have to keep zero sin status. Otherwise, they mesmerize you. He said, when you break the egg, the serpent will bite. So when we talk about this holiness living, it has to really do with the adversaries. And you can't afford to expose yourself. It's expensive. It's expensive. You understand? It's expensive. You guys, you can't afford it. It's too expensive. So make sure you maintain that. You understand? And I've thought, I've told us when a dream is repeating, when God wants you to be serious about something and He wants you to know that this thing is important urgent to deal with it. He repeats it. The dream will come like two, three times. All right. Sometimes these dreams that repeat are not only saying they are urgent. They are also saying sometimes you will know. You will know when is, when is that. Because when you talk to the Holy Spirit, it will let you know that this thing you are saying is going to happen, but you need to prepare against it. You understand? So sometimes it's the, the repetition is to show that this thing is imminent. Like the, when God showed the Pharaoh the dream in two forms, all right? Animals, farm, uh, farm produce, all right? Cultivation produce. He showed him the wheat. He showed him the cow. Those two were not to tell him this is urgent. Call somebody to pray and cancel it. No, it was imminent. It's going to happen. So prepare against it. You understand? And, and a lot of dreams that are like that are dreams that they, are, they don't have to do with your destruction. They have to do with things around. 
And God just wants you to prepare against them. So you have a plan to avert or to overcome or to, you know, be prepared for um, an alternative. Do you understand? There was a time that um, one of the prophets in the Old Testament, I mean, sorry, in the New Testament, Agabus, the prophet, he prophesied that there will be a famine in Judea. And he said he came, that famine came to pass. So it wasn't a revelation for them to pray against and counsel. It was a revelation for them to prepare against. And so what did they do? Bible said they began to gather resources and relief. So when the famine came, they were sending relief to the church in Judea. And the church in Judea was maintained during that famine period. It's not every dream that is to be canceled. You know, we have this, our attitude that we, <laughs> we have become the Alpha and Omega. Instead of consulting the Alpha and Omega for what his own will is, we just declare our own will. And, 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 you know, so we have become Alpha and Omega. We just do, do, do one-way one traffic. Some say, but we don't know. Yes, you don't know about Acts. Acts. I think, I think one of the things I'll close with right now, because, I mean, we, we've really done a lot. Uh, well, uh, there are so much more to cover, but still, we have done we've done really good good to with this teaching and subject this week. If you have really heard and learned, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, no satanic attack will be troubling your life again. I've seen people eating their just ordinary eating in their dream. Eating in the dream is nothing. Let me say it clearly to you. It is nothing. So don't begin to read meaning to it. But I've seen people eat in their dreams and lose their jobs. Mm. I've seen women eat in their dreams and have miscarriage. Not that they woke up. You know, it's, it's one thing that somebody is eating in, his, in her dream and she wakes up and she's having miscarriage right there on the spot. Mm. Now, scientifically, psychologically, people can say, okay, maybe the experience of miscarriage was happening and that dream was just trying to make this person to be aware of what was happening in the physical. Yeah, you can give you all those kind of meanings, but look, there were people, they ate in their dream. Three days after, they lost the baby. And it happened once, it happened twice, it happened three times. So these things are not coincidence. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, at the same time, saying that eating dream is nothing. Why? Because Jesus said, whatever goes into the to a mouth, it will come out in the something. He said, whatever you eat and drink is blessed. You understand? That is the finished work of Christ. That's the position we pray for. But there are people who have eaten in their dreams and they've gone into trouble. They've lost jobs. They've lost opportunities. Just eating in the dream. So that's why we don't take anything for granted. We don't say, oh, it's just, I mean, it doesn't mean, mean anything. No, we deal with them, but we deal with them correctly. Then when it is repeating, ah, I think I need to mention this one before we close. <laughs> the one they call spirit husband. <laughs> you know, we have that whole sort. You know, all kind of funny doctrines we've created in the body of Christ. Spirit husband doctrine is about somebody having a spirit husband. Is it possible to have a spirit husband? Does that exist? Is there an, an oppression like that? There is. There is. You say, oh, hey, who? Oh, let me explain something to you. In most of our cultures and traditions, in time memorial, because people want to keep their people, what do they do? Particularly those of us who are from the southwest of Nigeria. And even all over Africa, you see, we have marks, all these tattoos and all that, you know. We have markings. Why? The markings are to identify our own people. So that when we go to war, we say our own people, we can recognize them. We have tribal marks for identity purpose to identify this one is from this place, this one is from this place. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why? Because the normal thing is to keep a culture together. The, we, we, don't, we don't mix too much. We try to keep the culture together. So a lot of attaching of females to idols to keep them are you getting what I'm saying? We are done in many traditional backgrounds. And those attachments were marital attachments. Do you understand? So the idol becomes like husband to that woman, even though they're giving the woman out to a man and she has, she has gone. To, 
But the reason why they want that their idol to watch over her is so that in case they mistreat her in that place, that idol will fight for her. And in case they are not treating her well, she can come back home. The idol will direct her. That demon will make sure to push her back home. So we have all those things in the root of the background. And now we are now having people who don't understand their right from their left and they are born again and they are still having those demons trying to control their lives. No demon has right over your life. The day you give your life to Jesus, you are divorced from every demon. You are divorced from every demon. Do you understand? Christ is now the husband. And when we say Christ is our husband, it's not like physical husband and wife. No, it's this is a spiritual thing. Christ is our husband. Christ is my own husband. And, and this is not a, a gay relationship. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's not a physical. <laughs> because sometimes all of these things, but you are in the way the world thinks now. If you are not careful, they say, hey, so if Jesus is saying he's our husband and he's the husband of all these females, then Jesus is also a, a bisexual. What nonsense are you talking about? This is not a physical marriage. We are not marrying Jesus physically and having sex with Jesus. No. It's a spiritual connection. Now, so there are people who have this spiritual husband experience where they have sex in their dreams. Yes. And some of them, married women, they will have sex in their dreams and lose their pregnancy. We, we've seen these things. Some will have sex in their dreams and the guy they are dating will just stop dating them. So sometimes we find these demons don't want them to marry. Sometimes these demons don't want them to have children. Sometimes these demons want them to have um, dominant spirits in their home instead of submitting to their husband and all kinds of manifestation. What do we do with these things? The finished work of Christ. You are severed from strange genealogies. In the book of Titus, he said, we, we have been washed by the... Uh, uh, let, me, let me read that. Oh, sorry, I'm taking our time today. Uh, this is one aspect I should have touched, but thank God I, I remembered now. All right, now let's look at it in um, Titus in chapter 3. Um, verse 4, he said, But after the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. Is a regeneration thing. And the renewing of the Holy Ghost, so you are cleansed. There was a regeneration. They changed the genealogy from that negative root to Christ. All right? And that's where you fight from. And no matter what you now see in your dream, you see yourself having sex in your dream, you have to tell yourself this is the new genealogy I belong to. And this is the new lineage I belong to. And in the spirit, I am married to Christ, no more to that uh, force of darkness. And therefore, it is cut off totally. And you keep declaring that until the dream stops. Don't let the dream tell you that the demon has come back. Otherwise, you keep allowing it to come back. Listen, saints. These things, you fight from the finished work of Christ. And you fight the fight of faith. You fight vehemently. You fight fiercely. You fight strongly. All right? Because you are married to Christ now, not to that demon anymore. Not to that demon anymore. Not to that demon anymore. We are married to Christ. All right? So we are linked with him. Our lineage is now Jesus Christ, son of the living God. 
That's why the Bible called us light, called us righteousness, and called us light in 2 uh, Corinthians in chapter 6 from verse 14. He called us light. He called us righteousness. He called us temple of God. And then he called us Christ. Because your name now, my name, is Paul Christ. Christ is my son's name. Yes, you can say my name is Paul Olashore Christ. Yes, my son's name physically is Olashore. But my son name spiritually is Christ. Why? Because that's my lineage now. That's your own lineage too. You are colored from this strange satanic lineage. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not saying you're cut off from your family lineage, but you're cut off from any satanic thing that is in that lineage. You're cut off from it. You are not going to be cut off from it. You're already cut off from it. So you have to declare that. You understand? You understand? You have to tell that thing. You're looking for the wrong fellow. <laughs> the fellow you're looking for is dead. This one is Paul Olashori. Christ. This one is Tenitokwe Odetoye Christ. This one is Millicent Ayom Ayom Christ. This one is Adibike Akinsonya Christ. This one is Ajuma Adoba Christ. This one is Christiana Julius Christ. That's who you are. That's who you are. Rose on Okoya Christ. All right, Beatrice, Namboyo, Christ. All right, Princess June, Christ. Antonia Ibebio Ibeabuchi, Christ. Christ is your final son name now. Christ is your final son. I'm not saying you go and change your name out there and put Christ there, but we're saying that's your son name now. That's who you belong to. All right, Omobola de Christ. I'm looking at your names here. All right, Akindelo Yebode Olubukola Christ. All right, that's your name now. Olaide Olamide Christ. That's your name now. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We receive light, we receive truth, we receive freedom in the name of Jesus. And say with me, everyone, say, Father. By the victories of Christ on the cross, in the grave, and at the resurrection. I declare Satan has been paralyzed. Principalities and powers disarmed concerning my life. I declare my lineage is Christ. I belong to the family of God. And I have been cut off all satanic operation in the physical lineage. My lineage is Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right.